Aber. Jacket. It's gonna be cold up there. Yeah. Warm up with the sun for some. Don't know. tennis trade wise uh, the big bands played here Tommy Dorsey, Benny Goodman, Louis Armstrong and Glenn Miller were regulars during the summer season that's a good idea now there's a little street here off to the right that goes down to the water and Henry can go by uh, Bridge Street uh, slowly if you take a look down to your right there's no barrier at the end by the water that's because at low tide there is a sandbar which goes across to Bar Island from here. You can see parts of it. Uh, Bar Island is part of the Katy National Park. You've got a two hour window on either side of low tide to walk or drive across. Do not recommend driving. And don't miss that window. The tide is 12 feet. Uh, you could miss a meal. These are typical Bar Harbor cottages built in the 1880s to the 1920s. We have very few of them left. This yellow one is on the National Historic Register, built in 1901. The owners of that cottage built the next two here and the one across the street for their summer visitors. It's the kind of people we had here. Uh, they're not all bed and breakfast. This nice gray one with a white trim, two people live there. Two very nice people. I also bought it from two other very nice people. There's a small brick cottage coming up in the right, known as La Rochelle, built in 1901. The last private owner was Christian Colkin. His grandfather was uh, John Dorns, the founder of Campbell's Soup. The first
first two floors are for the family, the top floor is for the servants. That's right, now it's uh, owned by the Bar Harbor Historical Society. I didn't know at the time was that the fire was burning underground. So when the winds picked up on October 20th, the fire popped up 200 feet behind the fire lines. They quickly burned another 2,000 acres. Everything on the left side of the road here was destroyed, with one exception, one building survived here. The cottages on the water side, many were damaged, but they all made it. Just like this 1920s Italian uh, cottage. Uh, by officially out November 14, 1947, 28 days after it started. And down below us is the Bar Harbor Yacht Club. It's a small, very friendly summer club. Uh, they have excellent sailing programs for kids during the summertime. Both my kids learned to sail here. Both my kids <coughs> capsized here. I guess that's par for the course. So when the fire was over, it had destroyed over 17. abandoned apple orchard from the old hardwood farm. It became part of the park in 1921. It's going to cost about $3 a quill to get those uh, quills out. Our last quill is 80 bucks. She does not learn. We have five species of snakes that are indigenous to the island. The biggest and most vicious of them all is the garter snake. You know, those three-foot monsters. And over 300 species of birds that are either resident here or migrate across the island. So there's been serious flooding here the last two years because the beaver have clogged up the three foot uh, diameter culvert that runs under this road. You can see a beaver dam about 100 yards upstream and just beyond that to the right is a beaver lodge. Now this in the fall will be very colorful. Those trees on the far side are red, are swamp maples. They'll turn blood red. They're starting to turn now. Now the birches will turn bright yellows and that color will march right up Dora Mountain about two-thirds of the way up. And these marsh plants will turn reds and yellows. So when you come back in October, this will be one of the most colorful spots in the park. So we estimate it's 95 years old or so. Now there's one active beaver lodge and you can see that pile of sticks in the water on the far side. It has underwater entrances, two chambers inside, the vent hole at the top. Uh, there are up to three generations of beaver in there. I don't know what the pecking order is for when the, they get, someone gets thrown out. Uh, lots of other birds and animals will use this pond. I've seen deer come down here to drink. I've seen bald eagles fishing here. Uh, lots of other birds will come in here. Uh, in the wintertime, there's a river otter that loves to play in this pond. They will slide down the embankment on the far side onto the ice, just going back and forth and back and forth. My wife and I walk out here in the wintertime to look for them. But we have to be very still and very quiet because he's really skittish. If he sees us, he'll disappear through a hole in the ice and then she'll probably revert back to a meadow, which she probably was originally. So these, all these beaver ponds in the park are in different stages of coming and going as part of the ever-changing many habitats we have here. So the dam is now below us. We estimate it's 90 years old. It's maintained by the beaver, not the park service. And it's in great shape, very, very strong. Uh, it's withstood all sorts of storms and floods. Now if you look on the other side of the bus, you'll see the original stream level and what the vegetation may have looked like before the beavers started doing their thing. It shows the impact they can have on a small area. Now there are also some buildings in the background. The beaver did not build those. Now, that's Jackson Laboratory, established in 1929. They're world famous for the, the facts of the case are ever so slightly different. Uh, the lady in question was Edith, of course, Evans from New York, and she turned them down. Uh, she was 25 years younger than he was, and she didn't want a ready-made family. She did go to Europe that spring with three of her aunts, one of whom was named Molly Brown. I de detect recognition. Uh, they did return on the Titanic, and Edith and one of her other aunts are two of only five first-class ladies who did not survive the And yes, the trail does go up the cliff face. It has ladders and rungs. It's about 600 feet up. It's up, all the other trails will bring you down. There's a set of steps here from the parking lot. That's the easy part. A lot of time we see people go bounding up those steps and come back down about 90 seconds later. In my opinion, they're the smart ones. 
Uh, this trail is closed most of the summer because these ledges are also the nesting area for the peregrine falcon. This year we had two nesting pairs, which is normal. If they're disturbed when they're nesting, they'll abandon the site. So we'll pause here for a minute. Uh, you see a green bellboy, bellboy out there. That marks a rock formation where the water is breaking. Yeah, let's pause here for a moment, Henry, please. Henry, let's stop here, please. Yes, please. Yeah, that rock formation is known as the spindle. Local fishermen call it rock. several seasons here doing drawings and paintings and they would show their work in Boston and New York. So I'll just stop right here. This is a good place. Right here. Off to the left is not part of the Acadia National Park. And we'll stop right here. That's good. Yeah. We'll wait right here. Uh, we'll try. Anyway, uh, this is where they're very wealthy enough to get away from Bar Harbor. Uh, there are 52 cottages along the water that does go around the point. Uh, many of these cottages started being built in the 1870s, primarily by families from Philadelphia. Let's pull up right behind that dodge. Henry, we're going to pull off, please. The coping stones to allow for drainage. Your water is the enemy of the roads. You know what the technical term the park uses to clean Mr. Rockefeller's teeth? It's flossing. <laughs> so we go on flossing several times a year. That's the Jordan Pond carriage road. Goes over to Jordan Pond. Built in 1923 before he used mechanized equipment. That was put together with horses and men. Yep. And we'll stop right here. And yeah, that's good. The letter A in the shutters, that's for Atterbury, the architect. It has the original slate roof. I see the round bubble glass in the lower windows. That is original to the house. There's four bedrooms and one bathroom upstairs. The middle dormer is the bathroom. I've been through it. Uh, it's very, very plain inside. All the decorations on the outside. Uh, the park still uses it for their summer staff. They can't keep it heated either. But uh, this was, I guess, typical. Yeah, French Romanesque hunting line style. <laughs> to impress a girl. Hey, it worked. I'm still married to her. Uh, she thought I was nuts then. She thinks I'm nuts now. Now take a look on the left shoulder up here of the South Bubble. There's a big old rock that doesn't belong here. That's called Bubble Rock, the bunkhouse. One room for the ladies, one for the gentlemen, and a parlor in between. In 1881, local businessmen built a 10-room Victorian-style hotel called the Green Mountain House, which only lasted a few weeks. Uh, sparks came out the chimney, landed on the cedar shingle roof, and burned it down. And the sparks from that took out the tip-top house as well. They were only about 150 yards away. So in 1882, they tried again. They built the 20-room Summit House, which did last a few years longer. Huh. So now you would take your horse and carriage from Bar Harbor to the north end of Eagle Lake, very close to the boat launch site. There was a, a dock there. There you would board the Wawenet, an 11-ton stern wheel ferry boat. It was actually a converted river tug. And that, that Wawenet would bring you to the east shore of Eagle Lake. There you'd board the Cog Railway, take you to the top, you could poke around the mountain top, have a nice meal, admire the sunset, and retire for the evening. And then if you're so inclined, you could admire the sunrise, have breakfast, 
back on the railway, back to the well one and back to your horse and carriage. Very nice overnight trip. If you're wondering where Eagle Lake is in relation to this, it's right down there. So the railway came up in this general area. It's heavily overgrown, but it is identifiable. I've hiked large portions of it. Unfortunately, both the hotel and the railway were commercial failures. The railway went into bankruptcy in 1892. The rails were taken up and sold for scrap, all except for one rail, which is still on the hillside. It's not secured, so it moves around a little bit. So every summer with my grandsons, we'd come up the railway. The boys go up and talk to the rail, you know, how was your winter? Now the two passenger cars were auctioned off locally. They're long gone. The two engines were purchased and taken to Mount Washington for their cog railway, where they remained in service until 2009, the last of the wood burners. The Wawenet is still with us. It was scuttled in Eagle Lake in 1894. Our local divers have found it. Uh, there's not much left. The hotel, the Summit House, staggered along until 1897. I use that term advisedly. Uh, Maine had been in dry state since the 1850s, and in 1897, the Hancock County Sheriff's Office raided the Summit House. And sure enough, they found large quantities of alcohol, which put an effective end to the hotel. It was torn down a year later. When the Preservation Trust took over the top of Green Mountain in 1910, they removed all remaining traces of both the hotel and the railway. Now off to the left, you're going to see the, those five porcupine islands again. The ship is anchored behind Bar Island. I'll name the islands for you. From left to right is Bar, Sheep, Burnt, Long, and Bald Porcupine Islands. The way you remember their names. After the Bar, Sheep, Burnt, Long, Get, just like your tour guide. It's okay to say that I know about this. Bald. After the Bar, Sheep, Burnt, Long, Get, Bald. There will be a quiz on the way down, so remember that. So the Preservation Trust removed all remaining traces of both the hotel and the railway. Well, almost all. I have a mission for you if you're interested. Uh, the Summit House was located where the current observation area is, pretty close. There are still a half a dozen pieces of evidence there was a structure up there. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find at least one piece of evidence and tell me what it is. You can take a picture if you like and show it to me. You cannot bring the evidence to me, it's physically important. Just check it, just check it. Off to the right, you see our second highest mountain, the Sargent Mountain, about 1,200 feet. It slopes to the left, there's a wooded notch in there before it rises again. That's Penobscot Mountain. In that wooded notch is the highest pond on the island. The park calls it Sargent Mountain Pond, about four acres. They have no sense of imagination. Everybody else calls it Surprise Pond. Now, if you've been hiking on Sargent and Penobscot, you come to this little pond, you think it's a great place to go in for a quick dip. Then comes the surprise. It's spring-fed and the water's 45 degrees. You're in and out in a hurry. We have some islands that surround Mount Desert Island. But that big one with a, looks like it has a lagoon is Great Cranberry Island. One to the left is Little Cranberry Island. Far left is Baker Island. That little dot in the middle is a lighthouse built in 1820. I'll name some more of them for you on the way down. For the first three miles of this three and a half mile road, it is a continuous uphill grade. When you ride your bicycle up here, you learn that very, very quickly. Yes, I have done that. And I know to the quarter inch where this road dips down. A little rock outcropping coming up here. Three, two, one. Right here. When I come up here on my bicycle, I put my bicycle in the highest gear I have here, and I go roaring into the parking lot like I'm not even breathing hard. The fact that I'm nearly dead has nothing to do with it. And I take out my cell phone and I call everybody I know. I call my wife, I call my kids, I call my lawyer. Anybody will pick up. And guess where I am? Guess what I did? My daughter's an athletic trainer in New Jersey. Then she tells me to be careful. So we're going to have a 20-minute stop here on Cadillac Mountain. We'll be parked right on the curb, right over here to the left. There is a small gift shop and restrooms here. They do have water. It's right here on the right. It's the only building up here right now. It used to be a ranger station. We're going to take the inner circle here. Ignore the outhouses. They're shut down. 
the observation area is straight ahead of us where you see those people. There are two ways up there. One is a path uh, to the right. It is fairly steep and there are some large steps. I have an alternative for you. Uh, just to the left of these interpretive signs, there is another path which goes off toward the right all the way over to the observation area. There are steps, but there are ramps around every set of steps. If you want to go on the mission, I suggest you start here. You'll have much better luck. No more hints. So we will be parked at the number one position. The bus will stay there. That's why we can't see anything because they're behind the island. We, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. We love it. And there's thousands of square nails, four inch for framing, inch and a half for the shingles, and lots of broken chinaware, and a few broken wine bottles. So the sheriff was right. These low-lying plants here that are beginning to turn red, you see a lot of these things here? Those are all blueberry bushes. Yeah, it is legal to pick blueberries up here. Uh, you're way too late though. They were uh, ripe around the end of July into August. Uh, the park will let you pick up to one dry gallon of blueberries per day for your own use, but you have to do it by hand. You can't use a blueberry rake or any other mechanical device. So that will take you a long, long time. So we have the Porcupine Islands there. It's quiz time. Can you name the islands for me, left to right, in order? Where do you drink heavily? You don't? Bar? Bah. Sheep, something with matches. You're getting, you're getting warmer. I thought I heard it burnt. Then next, the opposite of short. Long. Then tour guide. Oh, well, I don't know. That's pretty lame. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you a big. No. We'll give you a C plus for that. I get you down the mountain. <laughs> okay, we have Eagle Lake again. This time on the right. You see Connor's Noble again in all his glory. And you may notice that uh, the trees are beginning to get a little bit bigger, a little bit taller here. Uh, Mount Desert Island is unique on the east coast of North America. We have nine identified growing zones. So uh, botanists have been coming up here for since the 1840s uh, to study the plant life here. They've done catalogs. I think the first catalog was published in 1840. Uh, they identified over 15,000 different plants. 
off here. That catalog is updated every 20 years or so. The last one I think was around 2010 or so. And if you compare the 2010 catalog with the 1840 catalog, uh, about 7,000 species of plants are missing. They end up way down there. How do we get up here? Well, from my house, it's an eight mile bicycle ride. not all uphill from my house to the base, but once we get here, there's no question you're going up the mountain. I had a question up while I was up in the mountain, you know, if I lived here all my life? The short answer is, if you will, you are the fire. You are. You've got 120 foot flames. You have a 50 mile an hour wind at your back. You've got a ground speed of 12 miles an hour. People cannot outrun you. Bearing down on Bar Harbor with the sound of a hundred freight trains and thick black choking smoke. Three quarters of a mile away to the athletic field, Bar Harbor's 2,000 residents have gathered to await rescue. You have blocked all the roads. Ships can't come into the harbor because of gale force winds. You have trapped them. Right now, you just destroyed one of the six Vanderbilt estates, leaving only the stone fence here on the right. That is it. Everything else you see here is new. This is not a good time to be in Bar Harbor. Fortunately, the Emerson School coming up on the left was not a school, that was the Emerson Cottage. That's where Jacqueline Bovier spent six seasons. Later did become Jacqueline Bovier Kennedy. Kennedy, precisely. As you come over this little hill, you burn down the Malvern Hotel, 240-room wooden hotel. It's right here where the Seasider is. You also destroy the Malvern Cottages down Kibo Street to our right. As a fire, you ignore the traffic light. You jump the road, that far corner was the Belmont Hotel. Jackson Lab and out to Otter Point. That's how close we came to being erased. You're now back in Old Bar Harbor with some of the surviving cottages. Ignore this one, that's only two years old. Uh, most of these, or virtually all of these cottages are now bed and breakfast, some very elegant ones. With equally elegant uh, price tags. He's doing a ghost tour. Really good guy to do it. So we're now on Mount Desert Street, one of the four primary streets in Bar Harbor. This is parallel to West Street that we went out. Between the two, there's a third street called Cottage Street, also parallel. They all connect with Main Street. Once you've seen those four streets, you have seen Bar Harbor. <laughs> so we're going to go down here all the way to Main Street. We have three of our four churches on this street. Years ago, one of the guides was actually an Episcopal minister, and he would hint very darkly that the presence of, of the three churches made the fire turn away. Might be, who knows? So on Mount Desert Street, there are a few shops and restaurants here, here on the right. To the left is our village green. That had been the site of the Grand Central Hotel, a 450-room hotel. It was torn down in 1900 to make room for the village green. We have our firehouse back here, the brick structure built in 1912. That had been the site of the Rodick House, the largest resort hotel in the world at the time. Six floors, 600 rooms that stretched from the firehouse all the way down to Main Street. It was torn down in 1906. The hotel era was gone. We're coming to Main Street, and up until 1917, that was a solid row of hotels. They too had seen better days. They, most of them were torn down, a couple of them burned down. So the buildings here are about 120 years old, a little bit of light. Somehow I think the two are connected. Someone came up with a connection. Spirits! Last time I said that, the microphone cut out. So we've got lots of shops on Main Street. My favorite are the ice cream shops. There's half a dozen of them. All sorts of flavors, some you've probably never heard of. We have deer, uh, deer track ice cream, bear claw ice cream, moose dropping ice cream, they're all very good. Ben and Bill's at the far end will sell you lobster ice cream. Yeah, but you get a little sample, a little spoon, a little samples almost people take. We have our own pet shop, Mark Carver. It is pet friendly. Our own tea company, our own Christmas shop. Cool as a moose. Teens and tweens like that. Some really interesting, funky clothes. That's what I'm told. My bell rung. Go for it. Okay, I'll stop. 
That's the other reason I take my clocks to them, they stop. We have two local banks, side by side since 1888. I was a banker, I do not understand this. Our saving and loan is across the street. So this is the heart of the Bar Harbor Financial District. If you really want to max out your credit card, come to Willis Rock Shop. Here on the left, they specialize in main semi-precious stones and original settings. I try to keep my wife out of there. We have Cottage Street on our left. There's shops and restaurants for about five blocks. And here's Ben and Bill's with the Red Lobster, where you can get your lobster ice cream. We have Sherman's Bookstore, so much more than a bookstore. You can get anything there. So this is Agamont Park on the right, right across from the town here. Then the site of the Rockaway Hotel. Huge verandas looking north over the harbor. So we're going to turn left here and head back to our starting point. I'd like to thank Henry for uh, getting us around so very, very nicely today, especially up and down the mountain. So thank you, Henry. We really appreciate it. Bringing us back in good shape. So we have the West Street Hotel here on our left. It was completed in 2012. There was an older West Street Hotel, but that was torn down in the 1930s. Uh, the Oceanside Rooms here, the Waterside Rooms, go for about 6.50 at night. Now, I don't stay there. <laughs> and Patty's Pub is the home of the $16 hamburger.